at one of the less common elements. I'm going to look at boron and how to extract it in the lab. And so that's uh, what some of it looks like. And here's the abundance in the universe. Uh, compared to some elements, there's more, but uh, less than others. And where's it formed from? Uh, along with beryllium and a bit of lithium, formed in uh, cosmic ray uh, fission. And so what you've actually got is uh, the particles that make up cosmic rays um, are hitting uh, particles in the Earth's atmosphere and uh, that's what's making these elements, they aren't sufficiently stable uh, to be formed in stars. And uh, what are some of the uses of boron? I uh, won't go through in detail, you can read those. Um, but uh, a fuel additive, um, actually a fuel starter as well in uh, aircraft as uh, the SR-71 further down, uh, used in flares with the characteristic green color and used in fishing rods. Uh, and boron is used to control nuclear reactors by being a good absorber of neutrons and controlling the reaction. And with things like Pyrex borosilicate glass, also used in space shuttle tiles that are there. And out of interest, boron was uh, detected on Mars by the uh, Curiosity rover. And in plants, very important in cell walls. And one of the uh, largest micronutrient deficiency problems is boron deficiency. And you can read some of those in uh, different, different plants uh, as what happens to them with shortage of boron. Uh, boron can be found uh, in compounds, can't be found native on its own. One of them is uh, borax, um, but be careful with it that you've got gloves on. It's used as a laundry product and can be found in, in supermarkets. And you can start the lab with it, but you have to first convert it to boric acid by reacting with hydrochloric acids. You'll have to look that up and do it carefully. We're going to start with boric acid. This particular product um, that I've got in the container here is 99% boric acid, and there's no other active ingredient. So with, with uh, some pesticides, please read them first. They may have boric acid, but you don't want other products. And read the safety requirements very, very carefully. Goggles, gloves, lab coat. Uh, parts to be done in a fume hood. You've got Bunsen burner and heating for over 30 minutes, so things are, are, are very hot. Uh, you're going to do a thermite reaction, and so always treat those with great care, and everyone, says his students, everyone should be 10 feet away. And then the list of, of chemicals, and look at the MSDS, the Material Safety Data Sheet, of what happens there. And when we start, we're going to just get boric acid here out of the container. It's fairly well divided, but we're still going to uh, grind it um, with a pestle and a mortar, and um, then put it into a uh, metal crucible, or indeed you can do it in a beaker, and uh, you're going to uh, heat the finely powdered boric acid um, to decompose it. So this is a decomposition reaction and one of the products is water, but the one that we want is the oxide of, of boron. And just thought I'd put this nice one here. We had an a important visitor as we were doing the lab. Um, and uh, did uh, two parallel sets of, of uh, extraction and one in a beaker. When you start heating it, you can actually see on the inside, it's not the flame that's depositing uh, water, um, but as the water's driven off and the beaker still hasn't got hot enough to vaporize the, the water completely, uh, you can see it on the container as the product. And 
it needs to be heated for, for 30 minutes. Um, so keep uh, eyes on it as, as you are doing it. Um, one of our sections we let cool and just put in a baggie overnight and then put it into a mortar again to finely divide it again. That's what the product looked like, a slightly glassy um, uh, product. And you're going to weigh the product. Uh, that's having grounded up because that's the amount you'll be reacting. And uh, do a calculation to work out how much magnesium that you want um, because you're going to need twice the mass of magnesium compared to the uh, diboron trioxide. And then you're going to mix up the magnesium with your powdered diboron trioxide and set up the thermite reaction. I normally just do them on a, on a brick. The instructions here said make an indent, so that's what I did. And I think part of that is to stop the product oxidizing. Uh, so have an aluminum tray with some sand in, just helps carrying the, the product away and doing this, this outside um, and putting in the mixture um, with uh, the magnesium and the boron trioxide and put all of it there and then add some, there's a spatula and the dark uh, amount that has been put into another little indent on the pow uh, the, the pile of powder um, the mixture um, a small amount what I would call about half half of the end of the spatula full of um, potassium manganate seven KMnO four and uh, once you've done that you're going to add glycerin. Now that's the starter for the reaction, the glycerin and the potassium manganate 7, um, to overcome the activation energy of the, uh, the reaction, the thermite reaction. And now move back and watch the reaction. You'll see a video in a short while of what it's happening. Um, tremendous amount of heat given off. Um, you're going to let it cool and you want to cover it and I sort of I haven't got a picture of it but fold it over aluminum foil about eight times and just with tongs pulled it over the material once the glow had gone and let it cool down um, and here using a spatula to pry out uh, the plug of product uh, from the indent in the, the brick um, once it's loose, pick it up with tongs. Um, it needs to be cold, uh, cool at this stage, and put it. Put water on it, and that's to stop any diborane that might be formed from igniting. And um, so you're just adding uh, probably 30, 50 mils of water to it. Then in a fume hood, you're going to add about 30. Uh, milliliters of two molar hydrochloric acid and you see as you do that you can make uh, the magnesium boride that may be there as a byproduct um, will form the diborane B2H6 um, and uh, that's why you've added the water so it's not flammable. There may be a pink coloration due to uh, manganese 2 chloride or perhaps some unreacted potassium manganate 7. Uh, then you're, you're going to filter the product and rinse it and that's what it looks like and we need to test it and so what we're going to do is a flame test. My one here doesn't really really give you that bright bright green colour a hint of green at the top of it so having some imagination here okay that that was one gram oh yeah that's no problem yeah we're gonna exceed it yeah okay this 
looks like a flower now. I mean, it looks like flower, O U R. Yeah, this looks better. I look, yeah, it's less of a powder. We're going to have to do calculations of how much a tiny bit so we know how much Add. magnesium to add in the I think I'll just pour the whole thing on there. The magnesium is pretty. It is pretty. I've never seen magnesium like that. I've only seen magnesium strips. I can tip it off if you want. Yeah. To put it on. It take, takes about uh, two or three minutes. Keep going. That's One more. more, and then Five. you're fine. How do you know how much water to add? There we go. Aha. How much were we doing? Just a cupboard? Yeah. That's three times as much. Okay. You want 250, right? Yeah. 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 A bit more. Take all the rocks and then mush them and mix them with water. <laughs> no. We are popping out. I've been working on getting the water out. 
No, I know, but we're getting all the other stuff out. Well, we don't need the HC at all. And a couple of questions. Um, in a, what we call a normal thermite with iron 3 oxide and aluminum, um, why didn't we use aluminum here? Why did we use magnesium? And what you want to think about, we added water to the product, we added dilute hydrochloric acid, and why the products with magnesium might be better and aluminum would not. And the other one is carbon can be used to react with the uh, diboron trioxide to extract the boron, write the equation and compare the reaction. Uh, so thanks to Washington International School and WIST Team Science.